Hello, happy nonfiction November, everyone. <laughs> you know, I'm somebody that primarily enjoys reading fiction, so I really appreciate that in the reading community there's an entire month dedicated to nonfiction. And already this month I've read a number of different nonfiction books and found them really interesting and informative and enjoyable. And as I talked about in a recent video, one of the ways I like to find the best new nonfiction is by following book prizes. I mean, I'm somebody that enjoys following a lot of book prizes already and there's a number of book awards that are focused on nonfiction and one of those awards whose shortlist I've been reading this month is the Royal Society Science Book Prize and this is an, a book award which has been running since 1988 and it uh, highlights the best in popular science writing from around the world for a non-specialist audience. And that's a really important factor of the description, I think, because I'm not a specialist in, in science at all. I never did all that well in science classes at school, but I've always found it really interesting uh, to find out about these subject matters and watch documentaries. And so I really appreciate that the uh, authors of these books are specialists in their areas and can f write in a really informed way, but which is also really engaging and you know which I can understand which without feeling like my head is just being completely filled with with figures um so uh, a couple of months ago this book award announced their their shortlist of six books so here are the six different books that I've been uh, reading through um, these six books were chosen from uh, over 200 entries which were submitted for the the prize and uh, the winner of of last year's award was Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake, which was definitely one of the best nonfiction books that I read last year, all about the weird and wonderful worlds of fungi and how um, how interconnected they are and how what important role they play in our life, um, which we might not even necessarily realize. So yeah, it was, um, was a, a really great book. And uh, so the shortlist for um, this year award. The winner will be announced on November 29th and that winner will receive £25,000 and the other five shortlisted authors will also receive um, £2,500. So it's quite a lucrative award and uh, yeah really interesting selection of different books. So I'm going to go through and discuss um, all the each dif different title um, individually and why I'm so interested in reading it or why I really enjoyed reading it already as I've already read um, two and uh, a bit of these books but I'd really love to know um, if you've read any of these books and if you have any thoughts about them uh, or other great new uh, non-fiction books that are focused on popular science that you've enjoyed reading recently I'm, I'd really love to hear about that in the comments below and get some more good suggestions. First on the shortlist is Spike the Virus versus the People the Inside Story by Jeremy Farrar with Anja Ahuja and Jeremy Farrar is a world expert in global infectious diseases and he was also one of the first people to have been informed about the COVID-19 virus uh, when it started spreading in China. Um, he was one of the consultants um, for the, the UK government um, but also for global organizations that were trying to tackle this recent pandemic. Uh, so I was slightly trepidatious about going going into reading this book because obviously the pandemic has been such a massive part of our lives for the past few years. We heard about it daily, um, but one of the difficulties uh, was that we weren't entirely sure about what was going on. Uh, it felt like information was like changing from day to day, and this gives a very thorough account of those um, couple years from the, the first discovery of the virus through um, to vaccines being developed and then looking into the future about um, how this particular virus is going to be handled and managed as well as future possible pandemics that that might occur and how we need to prepare um, for for those um, so I found it
you know, oddly comforting in, in that way to um, get this very informed inside account of this to understand what really went on because I feel like there's still a lot of confusion and misinformation um, uh, about the these recent years. And um, so this is a very thorough, informed account and uh, was absolutely fascinating. Now, one of the best nonfiction books I read this past summer was Other Lands by Thomas Halliday, which is this kind of guided tour through uh, the history of life on this planet going back hundreds of millions of years. And a book on this uh, short list that I found very complementary to that and really interesting is A Very Short History of Life on Earth, 4.6 billion years in 12 chapters, <laughs> which is quite a big statement to, to make uh, by Henry G. And uh, this was so fascinating. It, it goes back to uh, the, the formation of our sun and our planet and then follows and traces the path of life as it developed on our planet um, from all those hundreds of millions of years ago right up until the, the present and then looking into the, the future. And it's such a comprehensive and interesting account, uh, really focusing on the evolution of our species, but also different life forms on this planet. And there are so many weird and uh, forms of life that have existed on this planet in the past. And I feel like you don't need to, to read science fiction to weird read about weird, you know, alien forms of life because there have been so many of them on our very planet. And the way he describes um, some of these different life forms um, is so evocative and really compelling. And I just found it so fascinating it's and it's so um impressive how he he describes all of this in uh in such a comprehensive way that yeah i feel like i can really grasp and understand why so many of the existing species including humans um on on earth um why we're built in the way we are and how we evolved into becoming this way um but also yeah looking into the future and what life forms might take place in the, the coming eras, like with climate change, and um, but also with, with natural changes to do with the environment and the way galaxies form and collapse over time. Uh, yeah, it's so fascinating. Now, another way of looking at and understanding the history of our planet is through rocks and through geology. And that's what's done in this book, The Grey Whack by Nick Davidson, uh, which looks at stones in a particular part of the, the UK and how they can can tell us about hundreds of millions of years of history of the planet and he focuses on the stories of three different individuals in the 19th century that were instrumental in understanding how these different rocks um, can tell us these things about the the history of our planet and um, something I really appreciate in uh, really interesting and engaging nonfiction is when it goes into the stories of particular individuals in in order to understand that, that history. So he focuses on these um, really intriguing figures of a priest and a soldier and a, a scholar um, who were working at different times um, through the, the 19th century and uh, lent different areas of speciality in order um, to understand how these different rock formations could inform us uh, about these things. So he goes into their personal histories as well as their scientific Scientific research and um, so I'm, I'm part way through this book um, so far and yeah it's so fascinating. Then there is the book Hot Air the inside story of the battle against climate change denial by Peter Stott um, who is a specialist in climate change and much like the the book Spike I feel like there's still a lot of um, misunderstanding and misinformation um, about this subject matter and there has been for many years because um, scientists discovered that ch climate change was a real thing um, many decades ago, but only recently um, government policies have been changing to incorporate this into their plans and to try to do 
something about it. And um, so he he looks at the the history of that and and why it's been so difficult to incorporate this um, scientific reality into um, our our lives and um, how policies are formed. Another subject which has a lot of confusion and debate surrounding it is to do with gender. So the next book is called Different, What Apes Can Teach Us About Gender by Franz de Waal, who's a primatologist that's been studying the communities of uh, chimpanzees and bonobos uh, for decades. So he takes all of that research and his observations uh, about how these apes organize themselves um, between males and females and how that overlaps in some ways with how human beings um, organize um, themselves based on gender and how they relate to each other based on gender, but also how there are some crucial differences and how this can give us a really interesting different perspective on these debates to do with gender. And the final book on the list is Age Proof, The New Science of Living a Longer and Healthier Life by Professor Rose Ann Kenny. Obviously, hundreds of years ago, our ancestors didn't live nearly as long as we do today. And the latest science shows that 80% of aging biology is within our own control by the choices that we make. Um, so she looks at uh, different practical steps we can take to not only live longer, but to be happier and healthier um, throughout our, our final years. And she also dispels um, some myths. So this is another area which I think there's a lot of misinformation and misunderstanding about. Um, so she is looking at the, the actual science behind all of this. So those are the six books on this year's shortlist. Like I said, I'm really enjoying reading through all of these. I'm, I'm hoping to get to more of them, um, but uh, it'll be really interesting to see which of these books win on uh, November 29th. So I'll put a link um, to the prizes website below if you want to follow along with this year's prize and read some of these books um, your, yourself. I'd love to know um, in the, the comments below if you have read any of them or if you're interested in reading any of them now. Or like I said, if there are any other popular science books which you have found particularly inspiring and informative, I'd love to hear about that. But I hope you're doing well and reading good things and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.